Hello. 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 Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? Pretty good. Pretty stressed with my with a cat on me, but I think it's a nice cat. Yes. Pretty nice cat. Don't worry, it's okay. I don't want claws on my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. That's uh, maybe you Do can you take. Do you want me to her, take it? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, what's your name? Uh, the so, uh, I'm Bjarni. I'm Dauer. I'm Thora. I'm Pui. And, and together we are Super Sport. Where do you come from? We come from Reykjavik in Iceland. And uh, we are traveling to Italy as a band for the first time. So, very excited to be here. Have you been to Italy be before? Yeah, some yes. of us have been some of us like on vacation only, or yeah, something. holiday. Yeah, I, it's my first time and it's also our first time playing here. So. Where the name of the band come from? Ah. Hmm. Uh, well, it, it, it's the name of the band started because we are all like, we are very interested in competitive sports. <laughs> and uh, in the Which year... Which sport? Uh, it's, it depends, like we're into many different things, but in 2019 when we started the band we were really into like track and field and I was focused on like short distance like sprint, like running and so they were mostly like doing the throwing, like thro what was it called, spjotkast? Mm. When spears you throw the spears throwing. and you yes. throw the things, so these guys were mostly doing that, but I was doing the running, but I there was no one else in my... Uh, uh, in, with, with, the, with the sports association that was also doing the running and I needed someone to compete against. So I asked them if they would compete against me and then uh, we did and then Huyi won actually. He's the fastest runner in the band. Um, and then we all realized that we were more interested in music than sports and here we are. Where did you meet? Uh, in the sports association. Which kind of music do you do? Guitar, rock and roll, art pop, art pop, uh, beautiful music. Yes. Beautiful, we beautiful make beautiful, beautiful music. music. Yeah. Do you have some uh, reference group? Mm, many. Mm. This British band called the Beatles. Yeah, we from have. Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, okay. I will also say uh, Thelonious Monk, big inspiration for us, mm. and uh, some American country music as well. Florida Georgia Line, yeah, it's a good band. Rascal Flatts, also. Merch Paul. Yeah. But that's more like energy inspiration, not very musical inspiration. Do you do music as a job or just a hobby, kind of? Um, right now, we're, in the in -between. we're part time musicians, full time, also day workers. Yes, but. I think we're in a limbo state right now because um, maybe at some point in the past it was more like hobby, but now we are. This is our third tour, uh, or like more or less, yeah, third third proper tour for the in like one and a half year. So we are doing it more and more and spending more and more time on doing this. So I think maybe we can say we are semi pros. Yeah. Yes. We're in the semi pro limbo state right now. Where did you? Um where was your your last tour? In Italy or in other places? No, uh, the first tour was in the Nordic region, so we were playing in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland. Finland yeah. Yeah. The second tour was in France, in Poland, Poland, Germany, Germany and Belgium. Yeah. How many dates per tour? It's it depends. It depends. It's usually it's been like around maybe ten or twelve. And it's like shorter tours, but then usually uh, we are also doing some shows at home in Reykjavik and then we are maybe also doing like one-off shows. Like in the beginning of this year we went to Faroe Islands and we played like three shows there. Then we went back to Reykjavik and we played some more. And then in August we were in Poland for one show. Last week we went to London for one show. So it's like more kind of sporadic, if you will. How do you manage a tour like that with the instrument? with the support of the venue mm, with a really big google sheet <laughs> yes with all the information written down yes. and a thousand million emails mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we've usually just taken trains between places with yeah, our okay. instruments. And this is the first car tour for us. But I think also important thing is that uh, you know we are all like trying to help each other out doing this work, the organization work, and so maybe. For example, I am working on booking a show somewhere um, and there's a lot of info that you have to keep track of. So it's very helpful that Huyi, for example, is also able to help me keep track of the info. And then maybe Thora is looking into how we can rent a car and then maybe Dagur comes and helps her with like figuring out how it is possible to, to do that. So like, I'm just making examples, but I think it's very important that we are able to do it together as a group. The, the, the organization kind of work. the venue, how do you find a place to play? It depends very much. I think a lot of the time we have been very lucky to know, know good people in different places. I think this is one of the good parts about living in Reykjavik is that there's a lot of different people that come through for a short time or for a longer time from all over the world. So you, you meet people uh, who are maybe interested in music and you're very quick to meet them because it's such a small scene in Reykjavik. So I think a lot of our projects have started in this way, that we meet some people through the local scene in Reykjavik and then it turns out that we have kind of a, a, a DIY kind of network uh, that spreads all over Europe and, and further. Um, and then it can be also super random, like for example with our show here tonight at uh, Cinema Vecchio, uh, it started because last spring I was booking, like starting to book our, our first tour of these that I've been talking about. And I was putting an Instagram story, hey, does anyone, you know, can anyone help us book shows in Europe? And then I get a message from this random guy who is uh, Giovanni from Tanz Academy. And uh, he is just like super nice and he's like, you guys should come to Italy, I really like your music. And then it turns out he has a band as well. Uh, and then we've been talking about that for a long time and then finally we were able to make it happen now. So it's just like random connections through common friends or through the internet. Mm. Okay. Too, too. How is the music scene in Reykjavik? There are a lot of good bands yeah. playing in Reykjavik right now. Yeah, fucking great bands. Yeah, yeah really good bands. Uh, and very diverse, I think that's the best part. Yes. Which kind of music? So many Everything. different styles. Yeah. Everything you can imagine. I think like the ele like the experimental, like electronic, or like the, the experimental dance music scene is fucking crazy. There's some really good bands doing that kind of stuff right now, mm -hmm. like Side Project. And uh, shoe pill, I think, also are really good. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and some more bands. reggae, also. Not so much. Not so much. There is. It was like a couple of reggae bands, maybe like 15 years ago. Mm. Pretty popular, but yeah. much more rock and uh, yeah, yeah, rock and uh, maybe a more like electronic. Yeah, uh, also. Yeah, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of like also really good like hardcore punk 
and like uh, extreme metal music, but okay. also really good. Metal. Yeah, yeah, also really good indie and like alternative stuff, all kinds of stuff. But what like the, the music scene is great, but what we are lacking right now is concert venues. There's almost no concert venues left in Reykjavik, oh. especially like mid-size. Uh, okay. Like like this space, for example. There's nothing like this in the entire city of Reykjavik. All so, right. So it's very hard to be a band working there mm -hmm. in that way. What push you to make music? I like music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just I was singing in a choir, got introduced to music. Uh, then I got introduced to the regular grassroots scene, and I thought it was really cool. So I wanted to do that. But I, yeah, I like. Uh, different sides of music, rock and experimental, uh, contemporary music, and, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Um, I make music because it's just so much fun, and I love making music with my friends here. Mm -hmm. They're really good at making music with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. yeah. I don't know. I've been making music for. A long time now, and it mm -hmm. makes sense, and I don't want to stop doing it. So that pushes yes. me. Also, just not only these friends, but just also also all of our other friends when they are making cool music, you want to make cool music yourself. Yes. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I think like I think I, I can say the same thing. Like there are so many good people in our kind of closer circles that are making like amazing stuff, and this really inspires me to be kind of the best musician that I can be. Um, but also I just think like I've been doing this uh, kind of this music thing for so long and like we were in a teenage band together me and Dagur uh, and basically like I put so much time into doing this and I feel like you know I can't stop now I, can't, <laughs> I, can't, I have to can't keep stop going now. <laughs> I have to keep going but also I think it's about like for me it's a way to explore uh, maybe some feelings and like how Try, yeah, I don't know, try to understand through creating like songs, try to understand like how I am uh, moving through the world and like what are my truths and I'm always trying to discover this and I think music is a really good way to have this kind of uh, conversation with yourself about what uh, what you're experiencing in, in, and what matters, I guess, and also what does not matter. What your music is about? Yes, it's about everything. Everything. It's about everything. I want the music to be about everything. Yeah, I think. But uh, if we have to center it, what would we say to make it simple? Um, maybe growing just... up. Yeah, growing, growing up. up. Yes. And or just growing. Growing. Yeah. Yeah. Growing, yeah. yeah. I think it's about growing, and it's also about maybe well, learning. Yeah, growing, learning, expanding, compressing. <laughs> and uh, it's just about you know the being a being a person is a huge subject. Yes. Yeah. Friendship is yeah. a big one, but I think there's no simple answer to this. No, yeah, there's no one answer. Yeah. Do you? Use also lyrics in your songs or just music? Yes, lyrics. Yes. Lyrics also. Ah, yes. In Icelandic. So we we, we cannot understand. <laughs> no. It. no. But I, I I think it's actually fun to I try to explain what is happening in the music when we are performing. So between the songs, I will usually take a moment and say, the next song it has this theme and this is what. I want you to be thinking about when we are playing it, and I think usually this is like a really good way to get people in the same mindset as us, and it also leaves a lot more space for people to decide what they want the song to mean for them, which I think is really nice. We are, so we are not telling you this song has to be about this specifically, but you know, just take it for what you perceive it as and kind of like make it true for yourself.
create your song? Which is the creative process to make a song? It differs, mm -hmm. but maybe most often I'm bringing like a basic idea to practice. Or sometimes it's complete idea, but usually it's quite raw. And then we work on it together and we make the parts. And it's a very collaborative process. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm maybe most writing most of the basis, but then we create together. And then Thora is also sometimes writing, and sometimes we are writing completely together. It's a yeah. Yeah. living process. Yeah. The lyrics come out, come after the song, the, the instrumental part, uh -huh. or...? I think they, they have to come simultaneously for me to make sense, yeah. usually. Uh, if it doesn't come on the same time, usually it's not going to happen for me. Does that make sense? It yep. makes sense. Yeah. Or maybe some text idea comes first. Uh, and and sometimes then, it's and then, just like one phrase. Yeah, and then it gets molded into a piece of music later, but usually it comes in the same. But then you can always like change things and like adjust them. But I think the basic concept <coughs> has to come together to make any sense. Do you do also some political lyrics? I think we are a pretty political band, but our lyrics are not about politics. No. Uh, and I, I just don't really... Uh, think that that would be the best way for us to convey our political beliefs. I think it's much more important for us to, to speak them. Uh, and then we can just play the songs that are about what we feel that is true. If you are if you're playing a song that is not about anything specifically political at a concert, but then you uh, give a political message after the song, then you're a political... It's a political act. Yes. You once made a song criticizing the... Reykjavik. The city government. The city yeah. government. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the only political yeah, but it's never been released. <laughs> it, it hasn't been released, it's true. I yeah, we played that live. Remember how it is. Yeah. Which kind of instrument do you use? A uh, guitar band. So we have two guitars, bass, drums and four vocalists. We are all singers. Which is your relationship with the stage? Are you afraid or do you like it? Mm. Mm. That's, a That's a good question. <laughs> it really depends. Sometimes I am I'm really uh, stressed to go on stage, but other times it's just okay. Mm. But I, mean, I kind of like, uh, I think, I, yeah, I like performing. I think generally it's a good relationship with the yeah, stage because yeah. we've done it a lot of times and yeah. we're gonna keep doing it. So we, mm. I mean, it'd be weird if we kind of didn't like it. Yeah. But you can be stressed and, and sometimes less stressed, but it's nice if we can be close to the audience and yeah. we feel, feel good. I pr yeah, I agree so much. I prefer being close to the people that are listening. But I think like, uh, I get stressed a lot of the times, but I think I have a generally positive relationship to the stage. But I think it's just very important when you're making music to respect what it means to be on a stage and to be aware that it's very significant to step on a stage. Um, and just to remain conscious of this. And I, I always like try to remind myself that it's not... It's like it's a privilege to perform on a stage for other people, so um, to remind ourselves that it is a privilege and it's not like a self-given thing, yeah. What in uh, your show should never disappear? Maybe harmony. Harmony. Harmony, yes. Harmony. Like in many senses. Yeah, yes. in many words. Yeah, I was gonna say like connection to the, to the people who mm. come to listen to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true, yeah. That kind of harmony, it's like yeah. musical harmony, but also like our kind of internal Bond. harmony. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also the overall harmony in the room, like how we are interacting with everyone. I think it's a perfect answer. We yes. got it right. <laughs> Do you like also the aesthetic way of the stage. Yeah, yes, yes, I think it's, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think we like them. We, um, we don't have live visuals as of now, but we're like, I think we're quite specific. Yeah, we, <laughs> we want, want the stage to look a specific way. We want the lights uh, to be flattering and nice and beautiful and... And it has to, it has to be kind of uh, how things look should speak to how they sound. Yeah. So I think we're like, when we think about how the stage looks, we're only trying to amplify the message of the music because like if you know if we're playing a song that makes us feel a certain way but then the lighting is very like uh, it's like surgical you know 
white light and then like a green spotlight or something, then we're probably gonna feel like, you know, the way things look is kind of taking something away from the feeling we're trying to convey in the music. So I think it's just a, it's a, one of the tools that we have to just amplify our uh, energy. Do you have uh, a, tec a technical guy that come with you on the stage to make this kind of uh, activities or no? No. no. Okay. Not, not this time. No, 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 not on this tour. We have done it before. Ah, nice. And it was nice. Yeah. But not now. Did you record some album or EP or something like that? Yes. We yeah. have one EP which was From released 2020. in uh, 2020. Yeah, yeah. And an LP in 2021. And mm -hmm. then last Friday um, we released our third album. Nice. Yes. Yeah, or like album, not album. It's it's uh, a, it's, it's, a it's a piece of music. Yes, mm -hmm. um, like twenty five minutes. Uh, yeah, somewhere between EP and album. Ten tracks. Yes, but they're all quite short. Short music, um, guitar, singing, and there are some drums also. Some Just people forget time. this. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny little bit of drums, but um, yes, this is our albums. Yeah. yeah, and the newest one. It came out sixth of October. It's the first album that we are releasing with a label called Alta Music and it's a little bit strange to be collaborating with them but I think I'm more excited than not about the prospect of, of working with them more in the future. It, yes. it seems like they're very helpful people. Also, some video to promote the yeah, album. Uh, we made the music video. Yeah, we made the, like a video from like home footage from when we were playing in Poland and like when we were rehearsing. We have this like tiny pink baby camera that <laughs> yeah. we use. Like a small camera that's intended for babies. And it has like no frame rate and it's very like vibey. Yeah. yeah, it looks really bad, but in a very charming way. <laughs> Lockdown. In this big period of time, did you have the time and uh, set the mental set to keep going and to keep writing music and to keep playing, or you just stop? We made a lot of music in the COVID. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We made we made one song where we where we felt like we needed to put a song out, so we, they all had COVID and I was lucky I did not have COVID, but they we recorded on our iPhones in our house. So he recorded his guitar and his guitar and stuff, and then we just we put it all together in, in Ableton. So we even made a song, even though we we're not at the same place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think we all decided early on to just... To use it. To, yeah, and also to just like, be in each other's 
COVID bubble. Yeah, but just hearing the words like COVID and lockdown and stuff, I just get like really freaked out. It's like <laughs> terrible time. Yes. I don't want to think about it. It was so bad. Uh, and I mean, I'm happy that we were able to make some stuff, but uh, I'm just so happy that we're out of it and <laughs> I never want to think about it again. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, um, Hopefully a full-time musician band. Right. I think five years from now, that's what, 2028? Mm -hmm. Yes. At that point, at that point, I will be 31 years old. Yes. Mm -hmm. We will have put out like six albums or seven maybe, six or seven albums and uh, we will be in, in exactly five years from now we will be in the middle of uh, a very massive tour and uh, we are going to be playing at some pretty big festivals, mm -hmm. some pretty big slots actually in the pretty big festivals. And we will have signed uh, a very impressive record deal with a very uh, established but also pretty cool record label, probably from the UK. And uh, they will give us a lot of money to do whatever we want in the studio. <laughs> and uh, we are going to be the new frontier of experimental pop music that is made with uh, acoustic instruments. Uh, and uh, the the face of a, a generation of music makers in Iceland. So, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Yes. <laughs> and also with a strong and healthy fan base in Italy, of course. <laughs> what do you think about uh, the music scene? How do you see the music scene? It's often felt like more professional than playing in Iceland. Mm. Like there are more people that to help you and get food and uh, yes and, and pay you money yeah pay you money yeah. nice we don't usually get paid when we play at home so that's really nice to get paid <laughs> <laughs> it's like our best chance of getting paid is going on the road basically that and is true everyone has been just so nice to us and mm -hmm. uh, helpful I think so. I can. I think I can honestly say everyone mm. has been really nice and helpful yeah, I to agree. us. Everyone we have met in the music scene here in Europe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think also. I think one thing that I've noticed is like um, the bigger the city, maybe the, the less interested I am in the scene. Like generally, this is not entirely mm -hmm. true, but usually, like I'm drawn to the energy of like smaller towns and, and cities. I feel like usually where there is like. A smaller scene and people are more likely to know each other you're more likely to have like a, a good and communal energy as opposed to like a competitive one so i think that's uh, something that i really like so so for us we try to focus on playing in like smaller places rather than bigger places do you have any future projects we have an album coming out this spring yes a new one it's going to come out in april mm. in april in april yeah yes and then probably we'll spend some chunk of next year touring as well hopefully playing some of the bigger festivals in iceland as well i'm kind of waiting i feel like iceland is sleeping on super sports a little bit i'm waiting for iceland to be more excited about this <laughs> uh, social do you use social to, to promote your band or you like it you hate it <laughs> <laughs> we, we use, use social media to promote the band and I mean, it's a good like it's a good tool for community building and like remaining in touch with people and stuff. But I fucking hate using it for promotion. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I like the social aspect of social media, but like using it for promotion is like uh, I don't know. But I'm we spending only... so much time on it that it's just like it's soul sucking. I really wish I could do something else, just like hang posters on the walls in the street or something. Do you want to leave your your links? Sorry, the do you want to leave uh, the Of name? course, of course. Like yes. we do stuff there and like I think we're pretty fun on Instagram for example. But yeah. uh, what's the name? Super Sport, but with two S like S S Uber dot S S Sport. Three artists per person that you have to know. Grouper and Tim Hacker. Charlie XX <laughs> Shoo Shoo Black Country New Road. Kate Bush. The Cardigans and our good friend Kao Ola. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Arthur Russell, my fav all-time favorite uh, musician of all time. 
and then I will also, I cannot do this, it's so hard for me to do this right now. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard. I'm gonna say Flarir as well, our good friend Flarir. Okay, Flarir, that's great. Okay, okay, I go for uh, Arthur Russell, uh, John Cale, uh, and then Spielberg Thjóðana, Icelandic, like, ch chamber pop, like, folk band from the 70s. I really love them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oh,